together this morning to praise you and to worship you. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to be doing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn with me, please, to Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. The Lord gave me this message <clears throat> while I sitting at McDonald's by myself and drinking coffee and eating a bacon biscuit. It's titled Proper Conduct. Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. Colossians <clears throat> chapter 3, verses 5 through 11. It's the King James Version. It says, Mortify, and we know what mortify means, it means dead. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You see, idolatry can be a whole lot more than bowing or thinking about or have statues somewhere. And what you think can become an idol if you put your emphasis on it. Then verse 6. Now this, this is what people need to hear. People need to hear this. For which things say the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Verse 7. In the which ye also walked some time when you lived in them. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbaric, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Proper conduct. As believers, we are to abandon practices that we once did as non-believers. Each one of us as believers need to live worthy of our salvation in Christ. Each one of us needs to live as Christ lived in us. Things have changed drastically over the past few years. Back when I was coming up, what is normal today was called abnormal back then. Things have changed drastically. And not for the best, not for the better. Amen. Time is coming and coming fastly that we need to preach the Word of God. And the Word of God is the Bible. I love and care for everyone. There's no one that I don't love and care for. I don't care who you are. I care for you. The man next door says a lot of things. But I'm able to share the gospel. And we see how far God brings that. But verse 5 says, <clears throat> mortify me, put to death. Put to death your earthly nature. Well, what is your earthly nature? Well, I don't think it's too hard to figure that out at all. We all have an earthly nature. But put to death, put to death your earthly nature. This is easier said than done. This is easier said than done. Let me say it again. There's a lot of people who tell other people what they ought to do and have to do and should do. But the point of it is, is simply this, are they doing it? I say this before one is judging or someone else look in the mirror. And ask God through the power of the Holy Spirit to reveal to you if something might be in you that you don't even know. That is your idol. 
I hear a lot about Catholics having idols. I don't know if that's the case or not. I know a lot of Baptists that have idols. It could be a lot of different things. <clears throat> or assemblies of God or any denomination you want to put on it. Makes no difference. Because we're all humans. We all have earthly desires. But Paul is saying put to death. To put something is to take and put something somewhere is to put something in a specific place. One no longer wants to find it in order to use it again. We need to bury our old nature, and that's what Paul is saying. Because it stinks. Worse than a skunk. Amen. That's washed in whiskey. I've never seen a skunk washed in whiskey, but I know it stinks. In fact, if there's one dead in the highway, you roll over with, with your car, you're taking that stump with you. I said stump, I didn't say stink. You've got to understand my language down from the south. I'm a Cajun. I'm proud of it. I'm not going to try to change it. God made me the way I am. When you put something, <clears throat> when you bury something, death, when we talk about death, death is no longer alive. No longer capable of an influence. What influences you? What influences me? There could be a lot of things. Each one of us as believers living in the present tense on this earth. As believers. We should have buried our past. But Satan is a conniver. Satan knows more about you than you know about yourself. Satan knows more about me <clears throat> than I know about myself. It's not because they're smart, but it's because he's been following human nature throughout the centuries. He's followed me. He knows what my shortcoming is or he knows what my weaknesses are. And he plays upon that to get me to fall. But again, Paul is saying, bury your past. Bury your old nature. Bury what you thought before you were saved. Before I was saved, I thought about a lot of things and none of it was good. Everything was to please me. I please others to get what pleased me. Not, not that I cared for others, but others had what I wanted. To get what they had, I needed to please them. And politicians does it all the time. Let's talk about an idol for just a second. An idol is anything that has some amount of control over you. Whatever it might be. Amen. The fear of yesterday. The fear of what you might do. Or whatever. Fear will cripple one. Fear will keep one from doing anything. How about fear of failure? Fear of failure will keep one from doing anything. They will stay just the way they are. Amen. We need to bury that fear. It's not us doing anything anyway. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that's within us. Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory. Amen. And that's something that I can, I can depend upon. And something else, God will not change His word to please anybody. What is written is written. And that's very important. The Bible says put to death. And in verse 8 it says put off. Put off is being unattached to something or someone. 
put off as something that once had control and had an effect on one's daily lives. Put it off. Put it off. A lot of people don't realize what gossip is. We need to put that off. And I've learned this. I have given nobody permission to speak for me. Because I know something now. When someone says something to someone else and that someone else repeats what that someone says, that someone else is going to either leave out or add to. So if you want to know something, don't ask somebody else. Ask me. Because they don't have permission to answer for me. No one has it. I haven't even given my wife permission to do that. Don't listen to gossip. Don't do it. Listen to what God is telling you. Amen. Put off is to be at a distance from something or somewhere that we once was. Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary not to cover our sins as the Old Testament says because the blood of animals could not do away with sin. All they could do was cover it. Only the blood of Jesus can erase your sin. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus. When you come in repentance to Jesus and ask for forgiveness, it's not letting the world know what you are. God already does, and you do too. It's giving Jesus a chance to wipe it out. Yeah. And Jesus no longer remembers you. It's gone, baby. It's gone. But we need to put it off. Something that once had control. Am I speaking to anyone here? Don't raise your hand. But there's a lot more people needed to be here to hear this. You know what once had control or what has control over you now. It might be mashed potatoes. I don't know. You see where I'm going? I'm going where y'all never thought I would go. You see, we think of what someone else does instead of what we do. I remember people saying, I'm so thankful I'm not like that group of people. I'm so thankful I'm not like that group of people. Well, what group of people are you in? Maybe you need to look at the group of people that you're in. What are they doing? Definition of sin is knowing what to do and not knowing it. Definition of sin is missing the mark. I'm quoting Bible. I'm not quoting no wives tales. But put it off. Be a be a be a distance. I say this. Whatever bugs you, don't get around it. If you don't like mosquitoes, don't go in the swamps. Down south, in the middle of the somewhere the people are. At night. With a lantern. Because <laughs> it's going to attract all the mosquitoes. And you'll be red, not from the blood, but from slapping yourself. Amen? Do away. Get away. Put it off. You like crawfish probably? Yeah, I like crawfish when they cook. I don't like them half cooked. Well, you like to go crawfish? You know what I don't. I'd rather go somewhere where they already could. I don't feel like going to that but it's all mostly palm stuff now anyway. But let's pray to the Lord. Do not allow Satan to put back what you put away in order to deceive you again. Amen. Satan knows he can't take your salvation. But I believe you can give it up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Prove it. Okay. Demas was a servant with Paul. And Paul says he went back to the Lord. But anyway, let's go past that, okay? Let's make sure you're saved. That's it. Verse 9 says, I knew life in Christ. 
Lie not one to another. We're not to lie to a believers. My dad told me something, y'all know it, I'm telling the young people. We want our young people to grow up where they won't have, that Satan won't have an influence on them. Let them come to church and worship God. Amen. Let them worship God in truth and in spirit. When they get old, when they get old, old, when I say old, I'm talking about 12, 13, or 14. Satan's not going to have any influence on them. But the Holy Ghost will. I know how to do away with abortion. Bring our kids to church and teach them the truth. Quit giving them hot dogs and quit giving them all this fun stuff and let them start worshiping God. Let them start feasting on the Word of God. Put God's Word in them. And when they grow up, God's Word will... Woo! God says this. His Word says that His Word will not return void. It will accomplish what He will. If we feed them on the Word of God, I'm here to tell you that Word of God will not depart from them. And when Satan gets ready to start trying to attack them, to do things they shouldn't do, the Word of God's going to pop up, and Satan's going to have to pop out. Amen. 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 Woo! A lot of people don't want to hear that. Don't you think it's time to get back to God? Our new life in Christ. But now here, 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 here's, here's something about here. For those who disbelieve in what Christ says, the wrath of God will come upon them. I'm not saying it. the word of God is saying. Amen. Amen. The Bible, the word of God, is saying the wrath of God is coming upon them. The wrath of God. Confession and repentance is so, so important. It's so, so important. So, so important. This confession is not just words, but rather heartfelt words, which in turn carry so much weight. Let it come from your heart, not here. Not from your reasoning, but let it come from your heart. And when it comes from your heart, it's real. It's real. To be and to become overcomers, one has to be washed in the blood of Jesus. One has to be washed in the blood of Jesus. One must be honest with God. One must be honest with themselves. One must be honest with others. Through this confession and repentance, one is now living in the image of the one who created them. And the one who created them is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the instrument of all creation. The Bible, excuse me, the Bible tells us that. The Bible tells us that Jesus is God. John 1.1 1, 1 says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Not a God, but God. And there's four, verse 14 of that chapter 1 of John, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we built His glory. Amen. One's whole life was an unredeemed life. One's new life is a life of redemption. God is calling the church to wake up. How, how are those outside of the church? I hear so many people say the church is not in a building. It's outside of the building. It's true, but it's got to start somewhere. There's so many people, wherever. They don't know about Jesus. They don't know about Jesus. The church, the church is a body of believers that needs to go out from these walls and share Jesus Christ with them. It's very important to share Jesus Christ. Hey, I got something, something good for you. I was sitting down, I guess several months ago, I'm not really sure. I don't think it was that long. 
But a man came up to me. Oh, I'd see him never do his name. I always say hi, he say hi. But he came and said, May I, come, may, may I talk to you for just a minute or two? I said, sure, go ahead. Go ahead. He was thinking 50, about 50 years old, thinking about suicide. Thinking about suicide. I didn't share with him a lot of things a lot of people might share with him. But what I shared with him was the love of Jesus. That God's got a better way. He's already at his lowest point. He don't need me to step Step my foot on back of his head, pushing it around. He needs to know that there's something better. And we share. We share. Amen? Amen. We need to share the love of Jesus Christ with others. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what we're going to do now. We're going to have a time. If God leads you, we're going to have a time. You just coming up. If you just want to come to the altar, that's okay.